Let's talk 2024. We're about a month away from the first Republican primary debate, which will be on Fox News. Larry Kudlow's with me. All right, Larry, you say Trump cannot be beaten in the primaries. Tell me more. You sound pretty emphatic about that. Well, look, at that's not quite what I said. I said at this point in time, he has an insurmountable lead in the polls. Oh, sorry. And every, every single poll shows that. But the key point that I want to make on here is Trump is running an issues campaign. Uh, nobody else really is, with the possible exception of uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. I mean, Trump has understood from almost day one that because of the failure of Bidenomics, this is going to be a kitchen table uh, pocketbook election. So he has emphasized, you know, drill baby drill energy dominance, low taxes, deregulation, uh, getting inflation back to where he left it at one and a half percent several years back. And also, Stu, on other issues, on public safety, uh, on the border, uh, on no endless wars, uh, on woke, things of that sort. Trump has just run. I mean, his campaign has put out uh, a couple of dozen videos on policies. I mean, they're really running. Besides his experience, they're showing that his have got a, he has a forward-looking agenda. And I think that has helped him enormously in the polls. So it's kitchen, no, not kitchen sink, but kitchen table discussion. It's economics. So are we back to saying That's right. it's the economy, stupid? We heard that from way back yes. in the eight, 1990s, for heaven's sake. That's yes. where we're going. Uh, what about culture wars? Well, I didn't hear that last point. Sorry. But well, look, okay, it, Trump is the... No, go ahead, Larry. Trump was the original, Trump was the original anti-woke guy fighting the culture wars. I mean, Trump made conservative Supreme Court uh, justices uh, nominations. And also, of course, Trump has argued that he wants to clean up the swamp. And I think he has a lot of credibility on those issues. But having said that, I think this is going to be much more about the economy. I mean, I don't want to downgrade the border. I don't want to downgrade public safety and things of that sort. Very important. But I think other candidates uh, have made a big mistake obsessing about woke issues and have no economic growth and prosperity agenda, which Trump has had from day one. And every speech he gives, every speech he gives, he has multiple paragraphs about these kitchen table issues. I mean, for example, he spoke down uh, in uh, West Palm Beach last weekend, I think it was Friday, um, a Young People's Conference. Um, he spoke about falling real wages for 26 months, killing the middle class. That's such a key, important point. Nobody else is making those points. Uh, there are others, look, I'm not saying the others don't have good conservative instincts. They do. OK, and that it's a pretty strong bench and a pretty good field. But I think one reason Mr. Trump is almost lapping the field right now in terms of polls is because he's been so strong on the key issues that sure. matter to people most. One quick point. Inflation is coming down. You're at three percent at the consumer level. That's I'm not going to say that's a success for Bidenomics by any means, but the people understand that inflation is coming down. Isn't that a plus? for Biden going into the election? Well, Biden, look, Biden will try to sell it. But when you say inflation is coming down, the level of consumer prices has gone up 16 percent since Mr. Biden first took office. And that's what the killer is. Prices don't fall very much. Maybe in some cases, even gasoline. Sure, it's down from five bucks to three and a half. But it was under two dollars uh, when Biden took over. Don't you know, you can confuse Wall Street year to year changes. But the level of prices continues to rise much greater than the level of wages. And that's what people feel the most. The money in their pockets and uh, uh, pocketbooks and wallets just doesn't buy what it bought a couple of years ago. You're worse off than you were two and a half years ago. And people know that very well. Uh, President Biden was fact-checked for his tweet on Bidenomics. He had said real wages for the average American worker higher than it was before the pandemic, end quote. Twitter said that tweet contains a factual error. Larry, where is the president going so wrong on this? 
<laughs> well, his facts are wrong. Yeah. I mean, um, real, real, real wages uh, today are lower than they were uh, back when he took office. You know, there's so many of these. Um, my favorite, uh, this, this one's pretty bad because it goes to the pocketbook issues, but my favorite, Stu, is um, he cut the budget deficit by $1.7 trillion, and none other than the Washington Post that, you know, well-regarded conservative supply-side newspaper, that's a joke, <laughs> none other than the Washington Post gave him a bottomless Pinocchio for that, and he keeps repeating it. There's another one I saw this morning. Uh, my great pal Liz Peek has an article out, I think it's up on uh, Fox Digital, where Biden keeps saying he created 13 million jobs. So Liz went back and looked pre-pandemic, I think December 2019. We're about the same as we were then about 13 million jobs. So where are all these manufacturing jobs that he created? The, the level hasn't changed in three years, almost four years. So what is he talking about? I mean, yeah, it's a real head scratcher. It's just a real head scratcher. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, Larry, we'll watch you this afternoon, 4 o'clock Eastern, right here on Fox Business. Larry Kudlow, everyone. All good. Thanks, Stu.